Hello, welcome to Tea with Mali. We are here with Wanda Alexis Alexander. She is the founder of Horizon Consulting, as well as Wanda Alexander, uh, Alexis Alexander LLC. She is going to be sharing with us her motivations, her inspirations, mm -hmm. just life in general, the journey that she's been on to inspire you, those that are seeking purpose and passion in your lives, and doing something really meaningful for others uh, on this journey called life. Thank you for being here, Wanda. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> so, can you share with me your journey of how becoming an entrepreneur and a businesswoman came about? You know, when you first stepped in and when you first decided, okay, I'm going to be a part of something great and I'm going to be a partner and then eventually the owner of Horizon Consulting. You know, it's interesting because I wasn't one of those people who grew up thinking I would own something. But I did grow up thinking two things. One, I'm going to live well. Okay. And two, I need to be in charge. And so I didn't consciously know about the being in charge until I looked back over my life. But I just did everything in excellence. You know, I was taught that by my parents. Okay. Whatever you do, you do it with excellence. And you do it well the first time. And so when you bring that intention into any workplace, you get noticed. And so I was always promoted into leadership. Okay. So there's never been a career, even my first job at 14 in a daycare center, okay? okay? Within three weeks, they asked me to be in charge of all the summer interns. At 14? My, at 14. Okay. Of course, my response was, we're just watching kids and handing out cookies and milk. But okay. <laughs> so That's that great. happened then. And so it's a natural, it was a natural thing for me. But still, it didn't compute to ownership. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't grow up in a season of seeing people like me owning businesses, right? At least that's not what I called them. Then I looked, my aunt took care of kids all the time. That was a business, but I didn't see it like that. I just wanted to live well, pay me well, I would do my job well, and let me live la vida loca. And then I was in a situation for five years where I compromised who I was every single day of the week. When you say that, what do you mean? I mean the, the culture was so controlling and so oppressive and we were told things like this is not a democracy mm -hmm. this is a paternalistic autocracy wow. isn't that powerful wow. see how words can be powerful and of course my response to that not verbally but internally was you don't look anything like my daddy <laughs> <laughs> but I realized that was a controlling description you don't have an opinion you don't have a say. Your creativity is not wanted here. Your gifts and your talents are wanted because that equates to money. And we got paid beautiful money. And I did my job well and found ways to have passion in my job. And I was a leader. But I was more concerned with the people and how they were treated. Mm -hmm. I'm, the work's going to be done well. That's a given. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like the way they were being treated. So what did you do about and, it? Well, in the beginning, I did nothing about it. I tried to make excuses for it and have them focus in a different direction. But when I was with my friends and family that knew me, I would always say to them, this is how I feel on the inside. And I didn't understand that it was what I was doing, who I was becoming to be in that environment was constantly battling with who I really am. Mm -hmm. And many of us go through life in that battle and don't realize it, Absolutely. compromising who we are to be in something. So I knew I had to leave, mm -hmm. but I was just gonna go find another job. You know, that's what we do, right? right? And I actually went to a headhunter who said to me, you should own your own business. Let me sit you in this room and you figure out how much money you individually have made for this organization that you're in now. And I'll come back. And it was millions. Wow. And she said to me, if you can make that kind of money for someone else, 
why not do it for yourself? So that was the first time I had a shift in my thinking okay. that I could do that. Years before, 1993, my business partner came to me and asked me to partner with him in business, okay. where I politely told him, no, you have mistaken me for someone who doesn't appreciate a check that clears every other Friday of the month. Not moving. So there was that security, right? right. Not going to take a risk. This is safe. Until that got so unbearable. It was unbearable. And when I started to become Wanda in it, standing up for people, speaking to my boss, off the record, behind closed doors, this has to change. I eventually was told, you are never to question the owner of this company in front of anybody ever again. When we would have conferences and he would speak and I would have a question, mm -mm, no. And so the more I became Wanda and saying, no, I'm going to do what I believe, the more I got pushed down in terms of his favor in the company. Still got the money, still did the job, but he let it be known that I had lost the shine. But I didn't need his favor because I always had God's favor. And when I acknowledged that, everything happened for me. And when it was time to go, it was clear. And to me, the sea parted. And I walked through and I never looked back again. But I knew after those five years, when I do create a company, I know what I'm not gonna do. I know how I, I'm, I know how I want people to feel. And I don't want them to feel like that. And I don't want them to compromise who they are to be a part of this organization. Wanda, when you finally left after those five years, when you felt like you were losing more of yourself and then really coming back to claiming yourself and still not having any type of uh, traction that you desired um, to having your voice fully heard, you left. When you left, what happened then? Did you go right into launching your own business? Actually, I did. Um, the interesting thing is I don't want it to feel like it was right away. I think I left that organization spiritually, emotionally, I detached from that organization in 1992. And when did you finally leave? I didn't leave until 1995. Wow. But the beautiful thing that I learned from that experience is this. Never leave until you get everything you're supposed to get there. Because there are no coincidences in our lives. I can look back on it now and see I needed those five years to get the understanding of what I wanted to create and that it could be created the way I wanted it to, number one. Number two, right at 1993, I was asked, 1993-94, I was asked to do a training program. It was a national training program that was going to be used throughout all of the 56 field offices of FHA. And the undersecretary of FHA comm commissioner's office was spearheading this. This was her baby. And I was selected to do it and, and resented it. I have to be honest here. I was resentful because I know I can do a great job, but I don't want to do it for this company. You see that? Right. That is flesh. That is not us even being in tune to who we were because that's not who I am, but that was all of the resentment and everything that I had held in here and compromised myself. So I remember clearly one day driving across 495, across New Hampshire Avenue, and I was listening to a song by a woman named Cheryl Frazier, and it was called, You're Not Forsaken. And in that moment, honestly, this is what I learned about God always speaks. It's just, are we quiet enough to listen? Are we in a place where we'll hear him? Mm -hmm. And I knew and understood and can say, heard, if, if, mm -hmm. but really it's like a thought, a clear, undiluted thought. 
that's clear and right. And it said the training program is what you have to complete before you can leave. Okay? You have to understand, I've had other conversations with people who had said to me, you need to own your own business. I had one woman came from Pennsylvania, stayed in my home with uh, other people. It was through a tragedy, actually, that I met her. But she said to me, you are to stay where you are until you get what's there for you. She says, but there is a business for you to run. Now, you have to understand, when people said these things to me back then, I was like, okay, all right, ooh. I have to be honest, <laughs> right? Business for me to run, really? But the seed was planted. Mm. And this is when I learned all you do is plant the seed. When mm. the thought comes and it's clear for someone, plant the seed. You don't have to attach yourself to what happens to it. This woman didn't. The woman who was at the agency who told me I needed to own my own company, I went back there. She wasn't working there anymore because I just wanted her to know. So, after the New Hampshire Avenue a moment, by the time I got to work, I was almost skipping. I was singing. I put every bit of myself, my love, my joy, my gifts, my talents into that training. And it was amazing. And they wanted a video. So I videoed the training and they put all that together. And then that went out to 57 field offices. And I trained some people in person. Needless to say, when I left, I had already talked to Steve. He had left in 94 and he formed the company, okay. but we were always talking. Okay. And there was another incident that happened with some friends, very much like we're doing today, having brunch after church. And they said to me, we don't really understand what you do. And I started talking to them about mortgages and real estate and investing. And they said, well, we need to take some of our money and give it to you and have you invest in some things for us, which inside made me go, <gasps> Right? On the way home, this was the clear thought. If others are willing to invest their hard earned money in you, why are you not willing to invest your hard earned money in yourself? <laughs> wow. And I got home and I called Steve and I said, I'm coming. And so this was the deal. I come, 51%. I'm bringing business with me, which I was. I'm an African-American female, and in 1995, that wasn't a bad thing to be as a business owner, right? And I have more, I have the experience, the qualls, the resume. I've been working with FHA business since 1980. And so, that's why FHA was our major client and has been since 1994. I came in 95, I spent my hard earned money, $20,000 of it, to buy 51%. And the rest is history. We are now, what, 19 years later? Almost 19 years later. So, we now have gotten you to be full owner of Horizon Consulting. You have a team, you have staff all over the place. You're filled with pride. Um, you made it to a lot of people mm. that, are, that are watching you, mm. right? So then what was next for you? I mean, now that you have all this, what happens? What happens to someone like you? Well, you know, the beautiful thing about going through the process of doing something you never imagined you'd do in your life, but also understanding that this wasn't a mistake. You know, I just didn't fall down and roll over and ooh, all of a sudden I stood up and I was president and CEO. You have to understand that you've done some work, that gifts and talents are yours, they've been placed in you, and you just, for me, my intention has always been to do good. Right. You know, my intention is, if you give me this cup, mm -hmm. right? and you tell me that you want me to break it down and rebuild it, I'm going to figure out how to do that. And then when you come back, my intention is for this cup to look just like this. Now, it might have some cracks in it because I'm not artistic, <laughs> but my point is, my intention 
the minute I go into something is to do the best I can. It, I, I was taught that from here. We grew up in that excellent expectation, right? And so I don't know how not to do that coupled with growing up, understanding who God was. I was given the doctrine growing up, but then as an adult, I went on the journey myself to find out what was true and what wasn't true. And so at the end of the day, I honored that too. And so when you combine excellence, which is, I mean, look around you, there is nothing we have that isn't excellent and just absolutely beautiful. And when you realize you were created in that, wow. And you start getting stronger and stronger and stronger in that belief. So as I led the company, I wanted to be the best I could be. And so I read, I sought wise counsel from people. If I didn't know, I asked. And I taught that same thing to my team. You don't have to know everything. I tell them all the time, you are human, therefore you are imperfect. That means that you will make mistakes. If I have someone on my team that never makes a mistake, I tell them, I'm looking at you cross-eyed because that's not even real. So what's going on here? There's no need to be perfect because we, we can't attain that. What we can attain is excellence. That means doing the best you can. And so that's what I built. And because I'm teaching this and I'm teaching this and then I'm meeting other owners and they're saying, well, how does this happen? How is it that your people stay? And how is it? I started to teach them. These are the principles that I understand. I believe that we are all here to serve. And so as a leader, when you attach here to serve, I'm a servant leader. What does that mean? That means that all of these wonderful people have chosen to bring their gifts and their talents to my organization. My job is to serve them. What do they need to be successful? How do I nurture them? Where can they get training? What does their environment have to look like so it's conducive to doing excellent work? What do, and, and, and I don't leave anything off the table. What can we do better? My clients, what is it that they're looking for? What is their need? We're here to meet that need. We're not wasting their time. We're meeting their need while we're here. And so the question is, how do we serve better? Servant leadership. And so I teach that now. So that was when uh, you decided to brand yourself as a leader who are who is helping and mentoring and teaching other leaders. Right. And so now you have Wanda Alexis Alexander LLC. Correct. Right. What are some of the amazing lessons that you teach? I know mm -hmm. you teach on all levels. Yes. Um, you are not afraid to go there spiritually. You're yeah. not afraid. There's, there's, everything is on the table. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that's left off the table with right. the way that you coach and mentor. Right. So share a little bit about what, what you teach. Well, when I look at people who are in leadership, I always start with who they are individually. I'm not so impressed by what you've accomplished. I'm not impressed by what I've accomplished. I want people to know that. I am grateful, but I don't allow it to define me. It's not who I am. In fact, one of the sayings I have to my team is, this is not my priority. Horizon is not my priority. So I don't want you to make it yours. This is something that we're doing and building together. I don't want people to have pressure that they have to be, we don't have uh, overtime that's required. There's no mandatory overtime in my company. You work it because you see something that needs to be done and you choose to, but if you can't, that's okay with us. You'll never see that written on a performance review. You never work overtime. It's just not gonna happen. So what I try to teach them is all of that came out of here. Mm -hmm. I learn from mistakes. What do I learn from this? How do we do this better? I, I'm not perfect at it, but my intention is to do the best and give the best. And so I grew the company out of here, not out of here. Mm -hmm. Don't think I don't use this <laughs> because I do. I am that girl when it comes to process flow. If right. you got to come in and go out, I can see it and I can ask the questions to get us there. Mm -hmm. But I also have a team that asks the questions too. I can't do everything. And that's what I want leaders to understand. You grow it from here. You have the power to grow it. 
Do you have the passion to grow? Right. And is this part of your purpose? Yes. So we look at power, passion, and purpose and how that's impacting our lives. We look at who we are. What do we do for ourselves? Yama Van Zandt said, and I love this quote, she says, I'm, I'm going to mess it up a little bit. She says, you know, people used to ask me, this is just true, all the time, is your cup half empty or half full? And I never liked that. And my response always was, my cup runneth over, because that's what the scripture tells me. My cup runneth over. But what Yama says is really freed me. And it said, your cup being full is for you. The runover is for everybody else. Love it. So we have to keep our cup full. How do we do that? These are the things that I talk about to my leaders because we're now getting into emotional intelligence and right brain thinking and all of that. But that's what this is. Mm -hmm. This is just truly asking questions, being more creative. I don't have to run my business like they did. I, I have to run it in a way that seems right to me. And so I think if I didn't go through 10 years with one company and five years with another, I absolutely could not have grown Horizon the way that I have or created an environment the way that I had. I needed all of that to show me this is what works. Now, do you find it, um, because I find it with the hard work that I do, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get to the core of people's message, help them articulate it, help them speak their truth. And sometimes with leaders, it's really for the first time mm -hmm. that they're truly speaking their truth, and it's scary. You know, so how is, I'm, I'm sure you're finding the same thing. When you're working with a leader, they have been conditioned and trained, not just in, in business school, since they were a child. Mm -hmm since they were in their 20s when someone told them to stop dancing, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. To not truly be all of who they are and bring that to work. Right. Because we've heard all along, myself included, um, keep work at work and personal, personal. And I never liked it. It never felt like it flowed for me. Mm -hmm. I was never truly at peace. I felt like there was always an element here or there missing. Right. Until now, because I now have a purpose and I'm just being myself, completely right. free. Right. But isn't that difficult for leaders who have never been given permission to do that? Absolutely. And this is one of the permission conversations that we have. And there are other permissions as well. The permission to say no. The permission not to answer a question. The permission not to be nice. This, these are permissions that I've given myself over the years as a leader. Because being nice as a leader can get you in a whole bunch of trouble. You know, we learn people's lives and we figure that, oh, well, we know they have two kids, so we can't lay them off, and they come in with every excuse. This is where you have to leave the personal home. This is what I'm talking about. If, in fact, you're missing a day a week because of your family issues, we're going to have a conversation with you. And we're going to say to you, listen, your engagement letter is a contract that we have between each other. And on that contract, it said that you would work five days a week. And this is the job that you would do. And this is the payment we would give you. And these are the benefits. And this is the handbook. These are the, the boundaries that we've set for our organization. Okay? Can you live within that? This is our foundational principle. Can you live within this culture? And you said yes. And we appreciate that. But we're noticing that you've been coming to work four days a week and wondering, is there something we can do to support you in meeting your agreement with this organization? Or should we have a different discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay, some people, I changed daycare, my husband walked out, whatever. Okay, well listen, we have an EAP program and I would highly recommend that you take advantage of that because you're important to us, you matter. You're so passionate about when you talk. It's just you're so engaging, and I know it's because it flows through you. And you always point here. It's that instinctual, intuitive place mm -hmm. that I know you are helping your leaders understand that it's okay to trust it, right. to distinguish between whether that is fear or intuition, because they Absolutely. see they they feel very similar sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is that is something that is a gift mm -hmm. too. 
to be in a place where you have the experience. Mm -hmm. So there's the gifts, the talents, but there's also the experience, right? The, experience the frame of reference, is, yes. the place of empathy, yes. that people say, wow, she gets me, mm -hmm. she's been there. Right. That makes a big difference. You had to go through this and be your own uh, CEO of Horizon right. to be able to then talk to other CEOs. One question I have about the mentorship piece, mm -hmm. the significance that, you know, the, the significance we talked about, moving to success, through success, to significance. Mm -hmm. Why is that important to you? Why is helping others, especially leaders, be the best that they can be in whatever it is they do? What does that do for your soul? Wow. When I am in that moment, it is the most amazing place to be, to know that I've been given this gift, that I can feed and sow into other people, is very humbling to me. You know, God, really, this is what I'm to do? But when I do it, I can't explain how it feels. It feels, there are times I have conversations, I can't even tell you what I said. When I'm speaking in front of people, I don't know what was said. And people will come to me and say, when you said this, it really touched my heart. And I have no memory of saying it, but I know it's true. Because I, in that place, I don't ever want to lead anybody astray. I don't ever want to tell anybody an untruth. I can only speak from my truth and my experience. And when I'm giving that to you, it's because we're already connected. You are already my sister. You are already my brother. I am here in this world to be loved and liked. And I love you no matter what. Even people you've had to release in your life, they all had a reason for being in your life. They came to teach you something. And so Maya always says, and I love her, she's been one of my greatest teachers. She said, when you learn, teach. When you give, when you get, give. That is the simple, simplest way to define why we are here. Everything you need to be successful, to be significant, it's already in there. Just don't abandon yourself. Spend some time alone. Do you know there are people who have never spent time by themselves? And so they don't have a clue of who they really are. But they get clues. They, they come into a beautiful environment and they feel at peace. Mm -hmm. And they stop mm -hmm. to say, what has come over me? This feels so good. Mm -hmm. Dig deeper, ask the questions. We're never taught to go below the surface. We are taught to stay right here. No, those are thoughts. You know, we spend so much of our lives in prison to what everybody else told us we should be, we would be if we're better at no, you don't let anybody else define you. You have to say, this is what Wanda stands for, and I'm not compromising. You can call me every name in the book, but if you stand up here and call me something that I'm not, it's not going to penetrate. You know, when we were little, we had this saying, there's rubber and glue. I'm rubber and you're glue. Whatever you say bounces off of me and sticks to you. Okay. What that is, is... I have this bubble of protection around me that is the knowledge of who I am. And so when you say to me, you're this and you're that, and most of the time that's happening because they're not getting what they want from you. You have to be solid enough in who you are not to respond to something that's not you. Here's Maya Angelou again. We never respond to what people call us. We only respond to what we are. So if you say to me, Wanda, you're gorgeous, I will respond and say, thank you. <laughs> if you say, Wanda, you're gorgeous. significant, I would say, thank you for that. Thank you for recognizing. And I think most of us have to learn even that, to be able to receive, receive. the truth of who we are. We're so busy Say, oh, this dress, mm -hmm. oh, Wanda, you look gorgeous today. Thank you, girl, you're only saying it because it's true. My girlfriend, Gloria Wiseman, used to say that all the time. You're only saying it because it's true. It's beautiful. If we don't learn who we are, 
folks will knock us off our, I've been knocked off my feet, so I'm, I'm speaking from experience. You will get knocked over every single time if you don't know who you are. You have to be able to say, no, thank you. No, as, especially as a leader, no, I'm not attending that. Thank you for the invitation, but I can't make it. And that is such a tough lesson. But it's got to be, but because if you keep saying yes, yeah. then you're busy. Right. You're not fruitful. Fruitful is being focused and knowing what you're about. I have a flower with a stem on it that's on my computer. And the stem, which is my life, mine, my bloodline, my source of power, is faith, family, and friends. And I put myself right in that place. I am my first and best friend. And that relationship has to be nurtured. And then everything else grows into a flower. But I make sure what's on the flower. And if it's not, if I'm at my computer doing something and I look up at that flower and it's not listed there, then it's busyness, not fruitfulness. Wanda, mm -hmm. Miss Wanda Alexis Alexander, LLC. Yes. There are a lot of leaders out there, a lot of people who are moving toward or beyond success mm -hmm. into significance. And I know that just watching you today, learning more about the depth of you, that they're inspired by you. Mm -hmm. How can they reach you? How can they find you? How can they follow you? I am on social media Good. with a lot of help. Uh, you can find me at Wanda Alexis Alexander LLC. You can Google that. You can Google my name. You should be able to find me. Uh, it's uh, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Pinterest, LinkedIn, Facebook. I'm They'll find that. you. You'll They'll be able find to find me. And the uh, waa-llc.com, you can sign up for the mailing list and get the newsletters, uh, be in touch with the blogs, uh, see the different quotes that I stream through the website, and just whatever's on my mind, I just throw it out there. Uh, and the latest blog, I think, is called Pink Shoes. And it's a really, I wrote it in maybe two and a half minutes. And uh, I love it. Right. So, yeah, check it out. Check it out. Please check it out. Pink Shoes. <laughs> and so much more than Pink Shoes. Thank you so much, Ms. So Wanda. Welcome. It was a pleasure to yes. be with you today, to learn so much from you yes. just in this time that we spent together. Right. And I know that you are changing and shifting so many lives. And I want to thank you for this medium because this medium itself will change and shift lives. Just giving people access to information and wisdom and love. Yes. It's all that matters. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Join us next time for Tea with Malik.